Dear students, in this module, I'm going to start looking at the Chow Fassman algorithm step by step. So, this is the first module in a series of four. In this module, I'm going to give you a background on this algorithm and then look at the formation of alpha helices and how to compute them. So, you know that only a small number of combinations of the secondary structures can actually be made. So, if you have an alpha helix, then most probably several amino acids are coding for the alpha helix. If you have a beta sheet as part of the protein structure, then it requires several amino acids to constitute a beta sheet. So, it is not possible that every amino acid can have an alpha helix or a beta sheet assignment singularly. So, it needs to consider its neighbors as well. More so, besides the alpha helices and beta sheets, there are loops and turns as well. And we need to see how to predict the loops and turns in the protein structure as well. Remember that loops and turns are very important for the functional and active sites in a protein structure. So, let's start the chow fassman algorithm. Here in this table, you can see that all the amino acids are listed on this side and their propensities for forming an alpha helix, their propensity for forming a beta sheet turn is given here. So, if you want to look at the propensity of alanine to form an alpha helix, then it is 1.42 as per the Chow Fassman algorithm. Remember that this data is from their original work, so the values that are there, they may have evolved and improved over the last 30 years. So, if you want to evaluate each amino acid, whether it forms an alpha helix, then you need to use these numbers. I'll talk about the propensity for formation of an alpha helix in the next slide. So, first, you take the sequence, the amino acid sequence, for which the structure is unknown and you want to predict its structure. Next, you identify the amino acid regions within this sequence for which 4 out of 6 contiguous, that is neighboring and together, these residues, they give you a propensity for formation of an alpha helix more than 1.0. So, you can compute the propensity of alpha helices for each one of these amino acids and you can multiply them together and if it gives you a value greater than 1, then that region is declared as an alpha helix. Dear students, this region is just the beginning of the alpha helix. As you know, alpha helices are formed from multiple amino acids and for one turn in the alpha helix, it requires four amino acids. So, essentially, what you have just done will tell you about one portion or one turn in the alpha helix. Of course, an alpha helix can have multiple turns and therefore can have a bigger structure. So, towards that, your alpha helix, which you have just started, can be expanded upwards and downwards. So, let's see how to expand this turn. You can extend the helix to both sides until, so this is very important, until 4 out of 6 amino acids in your sequence, they have a propensity that is less than 1. So, what you are doing is, you are looking at 4 amino acids at a time, and if their propensity, overall propensity, is greater than 1, you start an alpha helix. Next, you, you can extend this alpha helix towards both sides of this helix. And if the propensity of this alpha helix drops below 1 towards either of these ends, then that helix is finished. Or that is declared as the end of the alpha helix. So, to give you a review again, you start the helix formation in Chow-Fassman algorithm 
by looking at four amino acids at a time and you take their individual propensities and multiply them together. If the overall propensity is more than 1.0, that is the start of a helix. You extend this helix towards both sides by considering four amino acids at a time, both upstream and downstream, and wherever the propensity for the alpha helix drops below one, you stop the helix. So, in this way, the requirement that four amino acids are required to have one complete turn within the alpha helix, you use that as done in the Chow Fassman algorithm towards predicting the secondary structure of the protein. Note that the propensity should be more than one for any four contiguous amino acids to be part of an alpha helix. And as soon as the overall propensity for any four amino acids that are together contiguous, it drops below one, then that is the end of the alpha helix.